This cake has been on my like cake bucket list for years. Years. I'm caking my favorite thing. The ingredients I use to make cakes. And I've chosen three ingredients to be the star. I'm gonna cake some eggs. I'm gonna cake a bowl of cocoa, Dutch processed cocoa. And my favorite ingredient of all, butter. I feel like this is the ultimate cake exception. What's his, his new movie, Tenet, where time reverts? Yeah. Right? Because yeah. you made, you had ingredients and turned them into cake to turn them back into ingredients. Oh my gosh, I didn't even think about this. So let's start with the eggs. I racked my brain for how to make egg cakes that had a yolk inside. So the first thing I did is I made some of my vanilla batter. I dyed it with egg yellow until it looked yolky. And then I thought I would try a few different methods of getting the yolk into my cake. So I piped some of that batter into these small half sphere molds. They're about one and a half inches and I baked it. Then I used the same pan, piped in the same batter and I froze the batter in the sphere mold. Now I have to bake the egg white portion of the cake. So I have these silicone pans that are shaped like eggs. So I baked three different pans. In the first pan, I piped in just plain vanilla batter and I pressed in already cooked yolk. In the second pan, I piped in plain vanilla batter and then pressed in a frozen yolk. And then in the third pan, I just piped in vanilla batter and figure if those first two options don't work out, I'll scoop out cake and put in a cooked yolk. This is like my version of a science experiment. That is, that's not your version, that is a science experiment. Okay, so I did a science experiment. As it turns out, the one I liked the best was the one I baked with the cooked yolk in because the one with the frozen yolk, the cakes rose and the yolk spread just a bit at the top. So by the time I leveled it in the pan, the yolk was actually smaller inside. The one with the baked yolk, the yolk obviously stays the same size. The batter rose a bit, but the yolk remained the same size because it was pre-baked. And then the third pan with plain batter, I knew that would work. That was my safety net. So I, you know, leveled those cakes, removed those eggs, scooped out a bit of the center. You can use like a rounded measuring spoon or you can even use a coffee scoop. Sometimes they're round to scoop out the cake. And then I placed in an already baked yolk. In the end, I've decided to make three eggs and I'm gonna use one of each. I'm gonna use one that was baked with a frozen yolk, one that was baked with a cooked yolk, and then one where the yolk was put in after. Just because this episode is not complicated enough? <laughs> yes, it's not complicated enough, so I wanted to complicate it further. For my bowl of cocoa cake, I've baked my ultimate chocolate cake in a sphere pan, a half sphere pan. I then level my cake in the pan using the top rim of the pan as a guide for my serrated knife. So you wanna tip that sphere cake out of its pan, remove the parchment paper, and then what I wanted to do was layer this cake in three. I don't want it to just be a solid cake inside, I want some nice filling in the middle. So I use my ruler and a serrated knife to cut the bowl in three, and I also also just cut the bottom a little more flat so that the bowl will be able to stand up and not just roll around. After you level this bowl cake, save the cake hump. Save the cake hump. The next cake I wanna prep is my butter cake. And for my butter cake, I actually decided to bake a new recipe. It's a really simple butter pound cake. It only has four ingredients. You can check it out on my blog. It's just butter, sugar, eggs, flour. There's no salt, there's no baking soda, there's nothing else in it. And I just wanted to make this because when I think about like a pound of butter, it's just kind of like a, uh, like a, you know what I mean? Like it's like a, uh. So I wanted to bring that uh to the inside. I, I don't eat butter with that uh, like, come on. I baked my butter pound cake in a 12 inch square pan and now I'm going to remove that cake and then I'm just gonna cut it into rectangular layers that will build up my block of butter. Just make sure to use a ruler, measure, cut all your layers the same. I've worked it out so I'd get four layers but in the end I'm, I think I'm only gonna use three. So now that all my cakes are ready, the egg cakes, the bowl cake, and the butter cake, it's time for Sir Squeeze. Oh, wait a minute. 
it's time. It's time. Uh, there's someone new in this kitchen, and boy, am I happy she's here. You all know him. This is Sir Squeeze. He's good at his job. I value him, but there's a new girl in town. Everyone, meet Lil Squeeze. I know she's smaller, but don't let her fool you. She does the job. She's easier to pick up. How many of our viewers are children that love to bake? Hello, Lil Squeeze. She's the sweetest. So for these ingredient cakes, she made her debut and he just watched in the background. Here is Lil Squeeze simple syruping my ingredient cakes. All of my cakes are now simple syruped beautifully. Now it's time for me to fill each one of my ingredient cakes. For the egg cakes, I'm going to sandwich the two halves together with some Italian meringue buttercream. And then I actually have to hold them in my hand to crumb coat them with buttercream because they're so small, they would just wobble around. Now I can put them in the fridge to chill. For my chocolate bowl cake, I am going to fill and stack my bowl still upside down with some chocolate Swiss meringue buttercream. I'm gonna crumb coat the outside of this cake with chocolate ganache. It's like chocolate on chocolate on chocolate. For my butter cake, this is actually the part I'm most proud of. So before I fill and stack this cake, I need to color some Italian meringue buttercream to look like butter. I must say, I'm so proud of this butter color. It looks just like butter, so now it looks like I'm filling a cake with softened butter. I stacked up my rectangles, and then I crumb coated the outside with this butter buttercream. I'm so happy. And now all three cakes are, well, it's technically five cakes, are in the fridge chilling. Near their originals? Yes, near their originals. So it's like the whole fridge is like a time warp. It's like I'm cloning. This is my version of cloning, okay? Do you now, remember Fly? Because you were basically making giant mutated versions of these ingredients, I thought of Fly. Of course, why do you, how do you always go here? And first of all, you know how much flies disgust me, right? Like I don't like bugs in general, but flies disgust me because they land on everything dirty. They're disgusting, I'm sorry. I don't, if there's any fly advocates in the audience, go ahead, leave your comments. You're not changing my mind. When there is a fly in this kitchen, I turn into like John Wick. This is, this is your last day here. I did not invite you. Well, the good news is John Wick is actually here. So when I see bugs, it's ch part of Chengis's job description to get rid of them for me. These bugs, you're pure evil. They were sent here by Satan. Who thinks a centipede is cute? Who? And I was like, ah! One eternity later. Do not leave comments telling me to make a bug cake. It's not happening. It's not happening. Don't leave, you can leave all the emojis you want. No. I know I went on a full rant that has nothing to do with ingredients, let's get back to ingredients. My point is these bugs have no place in my kitchen with my ingredients, never mind my ingredient cakes. I crumb coated and now it's time to ice these cakes again. So I'm going to ice my eggs with more Italian meringue buttercream. I'm using an invention to help keep that nice shape. Eggs are actually the trickiest cake out of all three of these cakes because this is a three dimensional oval. If you have ridges, if there's a dent and you cover it with fondant, it will be very noticeable. And after the fact, there's nothing to add to the egg that will hide any mistake. So even though they're the smallest cake, they're the hardest. So I really paid attention to how I iced them. And then I'm going to ice my bowl cake once again with some chocolate ganache. I did put a little board at the top so that when I flip it, there's a little bit of support. And I'm using the invention to go around and keep it really smooth and sphere-like. And then I need to ice my butter, which this is, this made me so happy. Like normally when I'm decorating a cake, I know it's very important to ice a cake a certain way, but a, a lot of the time if the cake is being decorated further, I can't wait to get to that stage where it starts to turn into what I want it to turn into. But this is a block of butter. So like just trying to ice it into a block in that butter butter cream brought me so much joy. 
I wanna try and make those paper indents in my butter block. So I measured my butter block and then I cut out a piece of parchment and folded it as if it was wrapped around the butter. So I folded in the sides, folded the top, and then folded the corners, the way it's folded around butter. And then I took that parchment and lined it up against my cake and just sort of ran my fingers along all the creases in the parchment so that they would indent the butter. And I turned the butter around and I did it on both sides. On the sides, it didn't indent as much as I wanted. You have to be really careful because if your cake is too cold, it won't take on the imprint. But if your cake is too warm, when you take off the parchment, it's gonna peel away buttercream. So I ended up using a sculpting tool to just make those indents more prominent. And then I sort of softened the edges with my finger because like I said, it's not a perfect block. Now for my egg cakes, it's time to cover them each with fondant. So I'm gonna roll out a little piece of fondant into a circle, make sure it's bigger than my egg. And then I'm gonna carefully pick up that fondant and drape it over the egg and just sort of smooth it out all around. And what you wanna do is cut away the excess at the bottom, but you also want enough to tuck under the egg. So I had to very carefully hold the egg in my hand and tuck the fondant under. You wanna make sure you don't hold the egg too long. The longer you hold it, the warmer your hands are, the more your imprint of your hand will go into the egg. And also it will start to flatten and eggs aren't flat. It will have to be flatter on the bottom because it has to obviously sit, but if we can really tuck that fondant under, we'll give the illusion of the oval. Do you know why eggs are like not perfect balls? The reason is because, because it's like this, if you roll it, it rolls back to you. Then how come eggs have rolled off my table and don't come back? Because of their shape, they can't roll too far away from the chicken. Okay, I like that. I wish I could make my son roll back to me at any time, but I can't. So now let's move on to my bowl cake. I've got to make it a how to cake it bowl, obviously. So I roll out some nice bright pink fondant and then I drape it over the bowl cake, the board and everything. Smooth it all along the board. I'm gonna use a fondant smoother at the bottom to make sure it's really pressed up against the cake. Now I can trim away the excess fondant at the bottom of the bowl cake. And I want this cake to have a rim. I want this to be a little different. So what I'm gonna do is roll out some more pink fondant in a circle and I wanna make sure that the diameter of that circle is wider than my cake. And then I'm gonna cut out a perfect circle that's about half inch larger than my cake. So I just put a bowl on top, cut out a circle. I've also cut out a circle from the center because I don't need that much fondant on top. And then I'm gonna carefully pick up this circle or donut of fondant and lay it on top of my bowl. I wanna make sure that it extends a bit out from the top so now this is the rim. Before I fill this bowl with Dutch process cocoa, I wanna build up a bit of a chocolate mountain because if I just put cocoa on top, it might move, it might blow everywhere. So I wanna build a mountain underneath to hold my cocoa. This is why I saved my cake hump at the beginning. So to build my mountain, I'm using the cake hump that I saved, that I simple syrup. I'm just gonna use a circle cutter and cut out as many circles as I can from the cake hump. And now I'm gonna build up those circles with more ganache on top of my bowl in the shape of a little mountain. It's more of a hill. I feel like I'm exaggerating. It's a hill of chocolate cake and ganache. Once I've built up my hill, I'm now gonna use a small scoop to scoop on some cocoa. But before I do that, this, is, this was nerve wracking because I don't want cocoa to get onto the side of the bowl. If this was a real bowl, I would just wipe the cocoa off the side, but it's not, it's fondant and the cocoa would stain the fondant. So what I did is I made myself a template, thank goodness, because this, this entire process had no templates. I built, I guess it's not a template. It's kind of like a template, but it's like a barrier. So I took some matte board and I cut out a big circle that's bigger than my bowl. And then I cut out an opening in that circle that is slightly smaller than my bowl. And now I can scoop on the cocoa. And this way I know the cocoa won't drop onto the table, won't drop onto the fondant. And very carefully I have to lift that barrier off the cake. Just really, really, really carefully. I don't know why I acted this out because you can see me doing it. It was so chocolatey. It was like eating a truffle. 
And why did this not um, come over to my... I still have some. Would you like it? Oh, uh, really? Yes, I do. I do. Okay. <laughs> If you're still at the stage of turning ingredients into cake and not cake back into ingredients, then I think you should check out my free four week cake and icing basics program. You'll get in-depth baking tutorials each week and you can go through them at your own pace. Master the core foundational recipes together with me. And once you have all the basics down, the sky is the limit on what you can create. There's a link in the description below. Okay, I can't send you guys cake, but if you want more cake, click here.